Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to the channel. So today's video is for the newest release from Holo Taco. I have their new cookies and cream bundle. There are seven polishes total in this release and none of these are limited edition. I feel like hints for this collection have been dropping for what feels like a very long time. Not to spoil my review. When I saw reveals for this release, it was not at all what I was expecting a cookies and cream bundle to be. I don't understand. I don't understand. So if for some reason you have never heard of Holo Taco before, Holo Taco Taco is a US based boutique brand. Holo Taco polishes are in 12 ml bottles. They are cruelty free as well as being vegan friendly. Every time I call Holo Taco more of a boutique brand, I get questions. In the nail polish space, we have generally three categories of nail polish brands. You have mainstream brands that you see in the drugstore. So think OPI, China Glaze, uh, Sally Hansen. Those are generally mainstream slash drugstore brands. Then you have very small brands that are generally run by one single person who's doing the mixing, the shipping, all of the things. And we call them those indie brands in the nail polish space. A third category of brands called boutique brands and they're kind of right in the middle while they are technically independently owned, so indie, because of the larger scale and the amount of people involved in the company. In the nail polish space, we generally don't call the larger brands indie, we usually call them boutique. Yes, I recognize it is definitely splitting hairs, but that, that's just that's how it goes. I didn't come up with these terms, so don't take it up with me. This is just what I have learned since being in the nail polish space. All the polishes featured in today's video were sent to me by Holo Taco in PR. This video is not sponsored, and thank you very much to the Holo Taco team for sending these over to me. As always, in the description box, I will have links to where you can pick these polishes up, the Holo Taco social media pages, my social media pages, as well as a link to my blog post on NicoleLovesNails.com, where I host all of my swatch photos, as well as provide a written review, and most importantly, Timestamps are down there as well. Let's get into this video. First up, we have Butter Me Up, which the brand describes as a pale whipped buttercream. I will be honest, I kind of hate that color description, largely because I've never made a buttercream that was this yellow before. Butter Me Up is a very pale yellow. It is not so pale that you would mistake it for white, like it's definitely yellow but it's also very, very pale. Formula on this was not my favorite. I found it to be very thick. thick. This is one of three polishes in the release that I did end up having to add thinner to my bottle. Like it was just not really workable for me without adding thinner. Creams, especially pastel yellow creams, I generally find this to be fairly streaky polishes and I found this one to definitely be a pretty streaky one. Not generally the biggest fan of pastel yellow, so I feel very conflicted saying that I didn't like this one largely because like I know I don't like pastel yellows. I think once I added thinner to this polish, it was a lot better and applied a lot more easily and evenly, but straight out the bottle was not really a fan of this one. And now we have Sweet Tooth, which the brand describes as a pale pink in a creme formula. The same issues that I had with Butter Me Up, I also had with Sweet Tooth. Initially really struggled with application until I added some thinner to my bottle. It was just too streaky and just was just, it was just kind of a battle to get it to apply evenly. Once I added thinner, however, it was a thousand times better. I generally find colors that are this light tend to be fairly streaky and uneven. My swatches show this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. This is going to be one of those polishes that I found best applies in very light coats and also floating your coats on if possible. I feel like I can see this one being a bit more of a finicky applier for a lot of folks honestly. I think maybe if I had added thinner to this one before I started doing my first coat that maybe I could have gotten it opaque into. However, my swatches do show it in three coats plus glossy top coat. I did have a couple of dark spots on my nails. The most egregious one was the one on my pinky, but that's because I thwacked my nail on my desk right before I started taking my photos. My forever pet peeve with pastels is this the tendency for them to show dark spots after three coats. So yeah, not a fan of this one. And now we have Milky White Shimmer, which the brand describes as a milky white jelly base with a fine white shimmer for a clean glowing look. Milky White Shimmer is the third and final polish that I needed to add thinner to my bottle. This one was just so incredibly thick. I did add thinner to my bottle, and if you're wondering why I just flooded the ever-loving shit out of my cuticle area, that was because I noticed when I was doing my full hand swatches that I found to get the most even coverage with this one that floating your coats on really was the best way to go. So I was trying to float my coat on, but I had way too much polish on my brush and it just made a gigantic mess. Once I added thinner, I do think this had a lot better of a formulation. However, I still was not a big fan of this. No, don't like that. 
I don't have any problems with like sheer milky finishes. My bigger issue comes in when even when I do like the lightest and most delicate of coats still have unevenness after three coats. Like for me personally, if this had looked great in one coat, two coat, or even three coats, then I'd say like it's a fantastic milky polish, but I found no matter how careful of application I did, every single coat was still fairly uneven and I just was not a fan. Shimmer in here is very subtle, so it's not gonna be like an in your face shimmer by any means and it also won't make removal difficult, just a little bit more messy than if it was just a white base. Next up, we have Perry Social, which the brand describes as a bright periwinkle polish in a cream formula. This is the pop of color that I feel this collection desperately needed. The formula on this one was pretty good. It was thick, but the kind of thickness I usually expect from a hollow taco cream polish. It wasn't so thick that I had difficulty in using it. It really goes to show how bad my memory actually is, because I could have sworn we had a periwinkle from hollow taco already. One thing I noticed when I was doing my full hand swatches that in the bottle, this looks like a pale purple. But once you get it on your nails, it's definitely periwinkle and more like blue leaning than purple. I like it a lot more on the nail than I did in the bottle. My full hand swatches show Perry Social in two coats plus glossy top coat. I am gonna call this one a two to three coater. Depends on your application style and personal preference. The irony is not lost on me that when I had initially saw all of the reveals for this release, I was like, why the hell are they releasing this with this collection? I really feel like this nice pop of color was definitely needed to liven up this release a little bit. This next polish is called Ginger Snatch and Hollow Taco describes it as a medium cinnamon brown in a creme formula. I absolutely love that they describe this one as a cinnamon brown. I feel like that really helps you picture the warmth that this brown has in it. The formula on this was pretty good. Again, it was on the thicker side, but the general thickness that I come to expect from a creme polish from Hollow Taco, it self leveled really nicely and was surprisingly opaque. Wouldn't call it a solid one coater, but I do think you could get this one to be opaque in one coat if you really wanted. My fillet and swatches show this one in two coats plus glossy top coat. This is a very warm brown. I didn't find it was so warm that it made my hands look red. This was definitely one of the polishes that I was most excited for in this release and did not disappoint. And speaking of polishes that I was very excited for, this next one is called Brownie Points and Hollow Taco describes it as a dark chocolate brown in a creme formula. After swatching Ginger Snatch, I actually expected Brownie Points to be a lot more opaque on that first coat. However, I did find it built up perfectly for me in only two coats. While this polish was also on the thicker side, I did find it very easy to work with and it self leveled very nicely as well. Otherwise, I honestly found this color the most interesting from the entire release. I feel like every year by the time late March rolls around, I am so done and over with pastels I don't wanna do this anymore. and I just want the bright summer colors to return. However, I will always have a spot in my heart for a brown cream, especially one that's within the chocolate color scheme. This was a solid two coater on me. I honestly don't see anyone getting this opaque in one coat unless you go in for exceptionally thick coats. I did not personally experience any issues with staining, but again, this is a fairly pigmented one, so make sure to wear base coat. And this final polish is called Black Flake Taco, and the brand describes it as being a matte black asymmetrical flakes in a clear base. Black Flake Taco had a fantastic formula. The base did not feel overly thick or thin, and I had zero application issues with it. Because this one is in a clear base, you will not be able to reach full opacity by just brushing it on. For the live swatch here, I'll be showing it in three coats and then in one coat over a variety of colors. The flakes in here seem to be in two different sizes. I had initially thought that the larger black flakes in here were going to be glitter shreds, they do not dry down nearly as textured as I generally find glitter shreds to dry down, like these are definitely flakes and not glitters. However, these don't dry down perfectly smooth. You will still want top coat to smooth everything out. I found that when you don't top coat this topper that it will look a little bit globby or chunky, but not necessarily as textured as a glitter. The flakies do spread fairly evenly and easily on their own. There is a good amount of flake to base ratio, so you can kind of judge your brush around on your nail if you want to get the larger flakes in particular areas. This does have a fairly gritty type of removal. I would not recommend scrubbing this one off, especially if you choose to build it up in multiple coats. I found when I was removing the three coat on my thumb that it was very much akin to like removing a glitter. The soak off method will be the easiest removal for this one. Okie dokie, so final thoughts. 
I feel like it's been a very long time since I had a Holo Taco release that like there were quite a few things in there that I actively did not enjoy. I feel like I'm fairly easy to please as far as nail polish goes. So it's always kind of a surprise to me when I have like a very strong dislike to something. Like I said in the review multiple times, I always find Holo Taco polishes, especially their creams, to be on the thicker side. I personally prefer my creams to be on the thicker side. I generally find when they're on the thicker side, I find that you're less likely to flood like your cuticle crevices. Polishes like stay where you put them and they don't run all over the place. And they're also a lot more opaque and I personally don't like doing more than two coats for a cream. So I was pretty surprised when I needed to add thinner to these bottles straight out the bat. For some contacts, I did wait 24 hours from these arriving to me to let them come to room temperature before I started swatching. In case you were unaware, if you were someplace where it's very cold or very warm, letting polishes come to room temperature before you open them will give you a better shot of having like good formula applications. So I don't know specifically why I struggled so badly with those first three. But again, I did add nail polish thinner to mine and with thinner, they were perfectly fine. I know a lot of people have some very strong feelings about having to add nail polish thinner to a polish as soon as they get it. On one hand, I find it an annoyance, but I don't find it as big of an annoyance as some people do. I think the saving grace of this collection for me personally was all of the polishes that I was most looking forward to were all fantastic and had the type of formulas that I was like expecting to have. I think as far as uniqueness, I think the most unique polish in this release is going to be Black Flaky Taco. I really like that that polish has a blend of like slightly larger flake particles as well as really small ones. I really like the coverage that you get with the combination of the two. I've actually been in the market for a Black Flaky Topper for quite a while so I'm really happy to finally have one. I'm honestly really surprised that I don't have one already. I have a Black Glitter Shred Topper but I don't have a Flake. So my top pick from this release is going to be Black Flake Taco, but I also really like Brownie Points as well. As a whole, I wouldn't say this was a bad release at all. I just think the majority of the colors weren't for me personally. I'd love to know what everyone else thought of this release. Have you already picked it up? Planning on picking up? If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it a big old like and, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this release. If you aren't yet subscribed, do consider subscribing. I open new videos every week on Tuesdays and Saturdays. I also live stream every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And before we end today's video, I do want to give a very special shout out to my channel members, Shenanigang! Just thank you guys so very much for the love and support. Names, of course, are all on the screen right now. If you would like to sign up for my channel memberships, that is, of course, very optional, but the link is in the description box if you would like to sign up. But please do not feel pressured to sign up for channel memberships at all. Again, like, comment, subscribe, all the things, and seriously, we are good. So just thank you all very much for joining me for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Set a big ass when I get high. I ain't looking at the clock, still falling like bra. Yeah, I'm headed to the bus, then I'm falling like yeah.